If you're experiencing money stress, fears, or uncertainty right now, in my 16 years of coaching people and in my 20 years of studying money mindset, manifestation, law of attraction, money trauma, the psychology behind it, what I've discovered is you're either in a set of abundance avoidance behaviors or abundance anxiety behaviors. Now, these behaviors are most often inherited from childhood, significant close relationships, and both traumatic and subtle negative experiences with money. So in this episode, I'm going to help you quickly identify which loop you're in by explaining 10 key symptom identifiers, and then we'll discuss how you can start healing these symptoms to move towards a securely attached relationship with money. This is the behavioral psychology behind your limiting abundance patterns in your life. And the beautiful thing is, once these are unlocked, you will mentally and energetically allow the abundance to flow freely into your life, maybe even for the first time ever. Jingle bell time is the right time to buy my brand new workbook course. <laughs> I love me a jingle. I wish I could sing, but that's the best you're going to get. There's a holiday sale right now for my brand new Make More Work Less guided workbook video course, 57% off the retail price. This program is many, many, many years of compiled data and studying and me implementing and testing things on tens of thousands of clients, including myself, and looking for the common themes, what works, what doesn't work, what seem to be the common resistances to allowing abundance coming in, and what are the things that absolutely break people free. And it's all compiled in this program. This is years in the making. I really should be charging thousands of dollars for it, but I wanted to make this available and accessible to as many people as possible because you can change your money story in seven days or less, unless you have a resistance to believing that's impossible. But how couldn't it be possible? You can have bugs that are fixed in your operating system of your MacBook or in an app on your phone. I know lately, I don't know about you guys, but my Instagram app has been really wacky. But every time they put out a new app update, one of the things that wasn't working is now working. We're no different. We're just a very complex, emotional, giant walking computer chip. And as soon as you really embrace that, there's no way this can't work. This is why there's already hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people posting online, emailing us, DMing us, sharing inside my Project Me Posse business coaching membership, the incredible breakthroughs and transformations that have happened. You simply have some gunk that is stuck in your abundance pipe that needs to be identified and removed. You're basically coming in with me as your expert plumber to clear out those pipes so that everything starts flowing. So go check out the page. You'll see all the things there. ProjectMeWithTiffany.com. Make more, work less. ProjectMeWithTiffany.com slash make more, work less. You can swipe up. That link is directly here inside the show notes. It's also in the description on Project Me TV over on YouTube. And it's in the link in my bio on TikTok and Instagram at Project Me with Tiffany. This is a limited time offer because I know what value is in here. I mean, you're getting five incredible videos. You're getting a 70 plus page workbook. This isn't one of those workbooks where there's like all these repeat pages and it's a bunch of fluff. It's designed to be fun, but it's behaviorally and psychologically designed to have these shifts made and it's broken up in three sections. So some people have binged this work in a weekend. Some people follow the protocol and do a full week. And some people have had some stuff come up some heavy trauma come up around money and they're still working through it. There's no right or wrong way. I guess I would say the sad way would be to not address it and to take all your money noise and that crap and those behaviors into 2024. Why would you want to do that? 
I want like a closing jingle. So jingle bell time is the right time to get your shit together. <laughs> what up, my people, my posse, my fellow crazies. If you're new to the show, yes, we don't take ourselves too seriously here, but we do very much take making money seriously, but we get to have a lot of fun doing it. This is the show that is going to help you grow your business, your bank account, that big, beautiful brain of yours, your abundance, your relationships, and everything in between. So this episode, I have been holding off on putting together for you guys. One, because I've kind of been in a little bit of a mentally lazy mode, and I'm not saying that to put myself down. When you're dealing with some heavy stuff emotionally in your life, it can make your brain not as sharp and not as on it. We have to give ourselves grace during those periods. That doesn't mean that we, we pass it off and do nothing. Actually, that's a form of abundance avoidance we're going to talk about today. But there's some things that are better served at a later date. So I wanted to make sure that this episode that is rich with data and case studies and things that I have studied, tested, and implemented for years that it really lands. And so I had to map it out. There's lots of planning that went on in this episode. So here's how we're going to do this. This is what I think will help you the most. And I'm very open to feedback. I never want to give you too much information because you don't really need more information. It's nice. It might satisfy your ego temporarily, but you need implementation of that information in order to elicit change. And we're all about change here. And we're not about it taking years and years to have to change something. So I'm going to take each of these two parts and cut them up for you. So the first thing is this abundance avoidance. When we are in resistance to abundance, whether that's showing up in more anxious tendencies or avoidance tendencies, the end result is the same. You are not only blocking the very things you want to call into your life, money, more support, love, health, fun, peace, etc. You're also repelling it. So there's so much out there that you don't even realize is out there waiting to come in. Waiting. It's kind of like when they have all these planes I see here in Manhattan Beach that are all up in the sky and they're circling and waiting in a flight pattern to land at LAX when LAX gets jammed up. And it's kind of cool because you don't hear them because they're not going to bother the rich people. And I'm not joking. They literally will say that when you like take off or you land at night, they're like, yeah, we got to do the swoop. We got to go around the rich people so we don't desert, disturb them. Because I guess back in the day, this area was in the flight pattern. It's like, yeah, no one's going to buy, even if it's on the ocean, right? And I'll see all of them up in the sky and they're just in a holding pattern and a holding pattern. And until it's time for them to land, until there's a space, until there's an opening, until it's safe. And this is how abundance works for you. You're in a holding pattern. There's all this abundance there. It's equally as available to you as it is to me, as it is for any of these people on the street. And you have yourself in a self-imposed holding pattern in a waiting period because it doesn't feel safe to you. It doesn't feel secure to you. It doesn't feel comfortable to you. It doesn't feel familiar to you. There's something about it that doesn't feel right to you. And therefore, the abundance can't land in your lap. And so you are either in one of these states. So let me read the description I wrote, okay, for abundance avoidance. That's where we're starting. Abundance avoidance in money matters, right, reflects a mindset that's reluctant to explore financial opportunities or embrace potential wealth. So it's like standing at the edge of an expansive garden, but hesitating to enter because of fear or insecurity, right? It's like, the planes landing, like hesitating to land, even though they're getting actually the clear signal, it's time to land, it's time to land. And they're not landing. And it's not like some gut instinct that they know better or it's not safe. 
they're just in such hesitancy. And at some point you're going to run out of fl- out of uh, fuel and then you're going to be forced to land. We don't really want that for you, do we? Those avoiding abundance in money might shy away from investments, opportunities, new strategies, new jobs, new areas for growth due to a fear of failure or discomfort with stepping beyond the familiar financial boundaries that you've become accustomed to. So it's akin to keeping financial dreams locked away in a box instead of opening them up and allowing them to flourish and grow. So here are some, I would say these are the top five if we were to look at the symptoms that you are currently in an abundance avoidant space. Now, some of you, when I've done episodes on the four money languages, for example, and if you've not listened to that four-part series, that is critical to listen to so you can identify where you're at and your primary money language. But I got so many messages and you guys over on Project Me TV on YouTube who are writing in the comments, oh my God, but this is me, but this is also me, but can you be all four? So you're going to likely recognize yourself both in the abundance anxiety and abundance avoidance. I want you to determine which one's more prominent and where you're at now. You could absolutely be a flip-flopper. So I have also a, a series on how the attachment styles relate to money. So if you've not, I don't know if you've heard of the attachment theory, it's used in like the relationship world, like with psychologists. And so I have been studying for, it was about two to three years. I was like, as soon as I learned about that from one of my clients, and she's a fellow podcaster, Dr. Morgan Anderson, let's get vulnerable, the podcast, shout out. I had never heard of attachment styles and the attachment theory. And when she explained it to me, I was like, oh my God, I was hooked. And yes, she diagnosed me on on the show. And she was right. Hence why she's so good at what she does. So I was like, okay, I can see how I'm an anxious avoidant, right? I can see how or I'm an anxious attachment style. I'm an avoidant attachment style. And I was like, but I'm a little of both. Well, she actually said, well, there that's an actual style. You're disorganized. So when you are hearing these. It is not unlikely for you to flip flop from abundance, anxiety, abundance, avoidance. Okay. Or you could be kind of rooted in one of those two areas. So I just wanted to give you a heads up. So let's take a look at these symptoms, these prime symptoms of abundance, avoidance. And I'm looking at my notes. I mean, I've got like typed notes here. Okay. There we go. I mean, I'm really. <laughs> really on it today for you guys. Let me take a little sippy sippy of my magical coffee concoction. I also felt this was a perfect time of year to do this episode because you can let me know if I'm calling you out with love. Most of you are losing your shit. It really, normally it starts in November. I call it the November crazies. It started earlier this year, started in October, and then it just keeps ramping up this cyclone really all the way up until almost Christmas of people losing their mind with not happy with themselves on not really pursuing and following through with their goals that they set last year. It is showing you how quick time goes by and that causes a lot of anxiety for people. It does for me too. Like, oh my God, I have so much I want to accomplish. I didn't get done what I wanted to get done. I'm not where I thought I would be at by the end of this year oh my God, I thought I'd be this far along, da, 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 da. And all this stuff comes up. And this, if you're in that spot, this discomfort is coming up to propel you into taking new actions. We don't take new actions when we're feeling okay, you know, so, so comfortable. What motivates us to take action is when we're in so much discomfort and so frustrated where we're at in certain areas of our life that we finally say, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to take this seriously. And those are the people that I want to do my make more work less guided workbook course. Because when you're at that point where you're like, you know what? Enough's enough already. I'm not taking this shit into 2024. I'm taking responsibility for myself and my part and I'm taking action. 
and I'm willing to invest my time, energy, and money into doing so, those are the people who get the best results, quite frankly, in anything I offer, whether it's that course, whether it's in my Project Me Posse business coaching membership, whether it is in working with me privately, whether it's in my mastermind. I can't make you take responsibility for yourself and go, okay, it's time. I'm your guide. I'm here to show you the way, but I don't do it for you. Obviously that's not anyone who says they do is red flag city. I'm your guide to simplify it. So you feel supported. So you have a clear path, a clear plan to point out the objects in the road and to point out, hey, you have a couple options here. There's like three options of which route you take. It's kind of like, I'm like, wait, like the app weighs for you. There's three options. This one takes longer. This one is shorter. This one is the fastest. But here's like the catch to each of them. And you choose which one you want to do. And then you'll get pop-ups along the way. Oh, I know you want to do that, but this is why that doesn't end well. Do you see what I mean? So you can use a fucking map, like an old school map. And if you're an old ass like me, at some point, you remember your parents pulling out a map. You had to go stop at a damn gas station to ask for directions. Yes, that was a thing. Okay. So you could do it that way. You could use a map and you're going to have to. There's a high likelihood. There's new roads on there that aren't in there. You're going to have to pull over to read the damn map because that's certainly not a good idea to read that while driving, although people did back in the day. Or you could get step-by-step, very clear instructions, or you could ask someone to tell you who's done that road many, many times and has done that route and has made that trip many times over to give you the absolute best way that's customized to you. That's your option. Okay, here are the five five signs avoidance when it comes to abundance. Number one, fear of taking risks. People avoiding abundance often fear taking risks or stepping out of their comfort zones. So you might be sticking to a routine to avoid new opportunities due to fear of failure, due to fear of it not working out, fear of putting in your time, energy, and money and it not paying off. And then this limits your potential for growth because if you're not willing to seek out a path you've not taken before, how could you possibly think you're going to reach a level of abundance you've never reached before? It's not possible. So you're holding on to a tree branch with one arm and looking down on the ground and wanting to be on the ground, but not being willing to let go of the branch. And you can do that and you can keep hanging on for dear life, but man, is that exhausting and you're burning so much energy and you're so uncomfortable and you're causing your own discomfort by simply not letting go and having faith and doing the fucking thing. And I know how scary it is, but you can't wait for something to not be scary. It'll never not be scary to your nervous system. I know because I am more so if I fall out of secure attachment when it comes to abundance, I would say this is where I end up first is more so the avoiding abundance category. So I'm very familiar with these things. I've wasted a lot of time and caused a lot of stress on my body and truthfully, probably those around me when I'm in this state. Second sign, a scarcity mindset. So individuals with a scarcity mindset who are constantly focusing on lack rather than abundance, what you don't have, what isn't working, what results you aren't getting, you know, you're focused on that. Then you often think of terms of not enough. It's never enough. Then you go into comparison and believing that there's limited success or resources available. And you're like, well, they have it and all these people have it and this industry is saturated and they've got this and they've got all the followers and people are buying for them. So why would they buy for me when they're already buying for them? And you're just so fixated on what isn't here 
what money isn't here yet, what followers aren't here yet, what opportunities aren't here yet, what downloads, what views aren't here yet, what clients aren't here yet, what pieces of equipment or certifications aren't here yet. Then you even can go picking on yourself, right? Well, I'm not this and I'm not that. And I don't have this like personally, right? It could be about your weight. It could be about your age. It could be about the fact you're not tech savvy. It could be about the fact that like you have a learning curve when it comes to learning how to create content and marketing your business. How in the hell could you possibly make any room for attracting abundance or anything that flow easily to you when you when your pipes are so clogged up with focusing on everything you don't have and everything you lack and all the obstacles why would you ever begin when all that's all you see you wouldn't because it ends up feeling way too fucking hard and i can call you out in this way because it took me 10 years to start Project Me with Tiffany Carter, the podcast and business coaching brand, all because of this. These symptoms I'm talking about, hence the avoiding abundance. All of it. One year turns to three, turns to five, turns to eight, turns to 10 real quick. And I, this is why people spiral this time of year. Because you realize how fucking fast time goes by and you can never get it back. I don't care who you are. You can't buy it back. What you can do is you can maximize the time you do have left left on life by getting into action. And then you can get some of your time back, so to speak, or by saving time. That is a thing which I highly recommend, especially if you're someone who's wasted a shit ton of their life on this kind of nonsense. And I'm not saying it to like be nasty to myself. It's very common for people who grew up in highly toxic, dysfunctional households, or you had a really, really toxic, abusive type marriage or relationship. It's not that uncommon because the last thing we want is more pain, is more discomfort, is more risk or more scary bad things happening. So then we end up getting really rigid and overly protective when it comes to this stuff. And then we end up snuffing out all the abundance. It doesn't work, but it is understandable. You see what I'm saying? And feel free, comment along here on Project Me TV on YouTube. I know that's really helpful to a lot of you. And I said it in another episode, we are going to be investing more resources in building out Project Me TV on YouTube. I've noticed a lot of my, I think you guys refer to yourselves as neurodivergent, if I'm saying it correctly, individuals, people who have learning disabilities. It helps you focus more. It makes you feel more energetically connected to my lessons, to what I'm saying by you being able to watch and then comment and type along. And I do review them. I I can't always get to replying to those, but I am reading your comments. So just know you are being heard. I just can't possibly on all the platforms review and reply to like every single thing. Okay. Third thing, resisting change. Avoiding abundance can stem from a resistance to change change to the nervous system of someone who avoids abundance is dangerous, is scary, is risky. Bad things can happen. So some individuals become comfortable and they're so comfortable in their current circumstances, even if those circumstances aren't fulfilling, even if those circumstances they know aren't healthy, even if they know those circumstances are slowly squashing their soul, even if they know those circumstances are robbing them of joy. They still choose comfort. They might resist new ideas, technologies, hiring me, buying my Make More Work Less Guided Workbook course, going into my membership, um, avoiding ways of thinking, new ways of thinking and looking at things for growth and abundance. Because change isn't just like in action or in spending money or in like totally like overhauling your life. It's also change in one's mentality, change in one's thinking, change in one's behavioral patterns and habits. 
Number four, self-sabotage. Self-sabotage is a common trait among those avoiding abundance. They might unconsciously undermine their own efforts towards success, whether through procrastination, negative self-talk, putting themselves down, comparison, which prevents them from achieving their full potential. So this is why it's so dangerous to try to figure this shit out totally on your own is because when you are standing in the picture frame, you can't see the entire picture. It's impossible. And I did not realize these subtle, unconscious, self-sabotaging behaviors that I had been doing for years if it wasn't until I hired an experienced coach where I had my law of attraction coach for eight years. That's when that started. There were so many interesting things that I had no idea about. And I was reading all the books. I had the shelf help library. There weren't podcasts at that time, but I had like all the things on CD. It was like, because there wasn't audible either. So it was like Louise Hayes stuff on CD or Dr. Phil. Who else did I listen to? I had some Tony Robbins, probably Zig Ziglar. I was going to classes. I did lots of things, lots of learning, but that wasn't someone really helping me dive in for me to explore what is clogging my pipes. We can only get so far on our own. And I I think that's really important to remember. That doesn't mean that you're an idiot. That doesn't mean that doesn't mean any type of thing about you. That means you're human, but people who avoid abundance also avoid help and avoid asking for help. Number five, unwillingness to invest in self-development. People avoiding abundance often hesitate to invest time, effort, or resources in their own personal or professional development. Like you put it off. I'll do that later. You kind of read it as it's a nice to do. It's even a luxury to do. And I know there's some of you doing that with my guided workbook video course. Like, oh, I'm sure that I'll maybe learn a couple things, but like my priority is strategy, strategy, strategy. I need to get the strategy. I need to da 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 da. And the very stuff you tend to kind of avoid and put off are the actual very things that will get you the abundance that you want. Of course, it's easier to focus on things like strategy and getting fixated on what do I post and when do I post and hashtags and all this shit. All that is shit. If you have all this stuff underneath it, which you do because everyone does. And then you're going to just be constantly a force of resistance, just smacking against it, smacking against it. That's not going to make you let go of the branch to get on the ground. So you might view self-improvement activities such as learning new skills, seeking mentorship, investing in education as unnecessary, which is limiting your ability to grow and attract abundance. Or you see it as not a priority would be another way to say it. Maybe you even come up with excuses of when I'm making more money, when I have more time. You're not seeing the true ROI of this. Recognizing these signs that I just gave you is a crucial step to break free from these limiting beliefs and behaviors. And now where do we go from here, right? What do we do? How do we start moving out of this? Well, one, you had to identify it. And I want you to do it with self-compassion and go, where is this coming from? I want you to speak to your fear. I want you to speak at which you're avoiding, right? Talk to that fear. Your fear needs to be heard, not squashed down, not put in a box, not compartmentalized. Talk to that fear. It's a lot of it's your inner child too, but what are, what are you afraid is going to happen? What are, what are you afraid might not happen if you don't do it? What are you trying to protect yourself from? And in a kind and loving way, because that's all your nervous system is doing. It's trying to, you're trying to protect yourself from a perceived fear. And I need you to have some understanding of that and get, and have that fear be heard. And then I want you to start, start developing a plan of how can I best set myself up to be supported and protected 
while taking the action anyway. There, there's no way to get to where you want to go without without doing these actions. Okay, you have to take contrary actions. Period. End of story. And you're going to feel scared. You're going to feel terrified. You're going to feel com- uncomfortable. That's inevitable. The only way not to is to deliberately stay stuck and in avoidance where you're at. And then guess what? Then you have another price to pay because now you're riddled with guilt. You're riddled with frustration. You start feeling depressed. You feel unfulfilled. You feel disappointed in yourself. Your self-worth goes down. There's a whole nother bag that comes with that. So it's really not working for you or you wouldn't be listening to this episode, probably nodding your fucking head right now. The price will just get to be bigger and bigger for you staying in avoidance and you grasping onto that branch. Your knuckles will bleed, your hand will cramp, and at some point you'll let go and then you'll be like, why the fuck did I wait 10 years? Thank you. Owning my shit over here. So what can best support you? Is it having a therapist? Is it having a coach like me? Is it committing to taking one new scary action a week? Is it ripping off the fucking bandaid and just doing it? Because something has to change. Just thinking about changing, just talking about changing, just identifying what needs to change. Those aren't actions. So I want you to create actions that go with that and make that new commitment to yourself. These are the actions I'm going to take. This is what I'm committed to do. And yes, I'm scared and I'm doing it anyway. Yes, I'm scared I'm showing up anyway. Yes, I'm scared it's happening anyway. Yes, I'm terrified it won't work and I'm going for it anyway. So we honor our feelings and we show the fuck up anyway. All right, let's move on to the for sake of time here because I don't want to overwhelm you with information. Let's go to the anxious side of abundance. Here's my description I wrote out for abundance anxiety. Someone experiencing abundance anxiety might have achieved success or abundance, but constantly worries about losing it. They might feel overwhelmed, have difficulty in receiving or enjoying their achievements, and might fear making mistakes that could lead to loss or failure because they don't want to lose what they've already built or the lifestyle that they've built, even though they want more, they're holding on so tightly to what they have. They don't want to risk that in order to call in more. And because of that, you actually end up losing, even though you think you're protecting with with ferocious tendencies you're actually chipping away at what you've already built. Because if we're not growing, even if it's a little tiny seed at a time, you're actually losing. You're actually depreciating in value, both tangibly, monetarily, but also internally. You know how there's, I think there's a line that says like, if you're not growing, you're dying or something like that. It's true. That doesn't mean you have to grow at some wild pace. Don't put that on yourself, but you think you're protecting it. And I have to be careful of this too. I'm more disorganized where I can flip flop in these areas if I'm not in secure secureness when it comes to abundance, which is where I'm at most all the time because of the practices and the work that I do daily in prioritizing it. But I'm a human being. I slip into it. The shit rattles me. Okay. And I've built an amazing lifestyle for myself that I really like. That was part of also why I didn't start Project Me. I already have my eight figure business, it's already working. I already knew what it was all about. Why would I want to risk my time, energy, and money on doing something new when I already had something that was working? Because It was chipping away. The value was going down on my life. I wasn't feeling fulfilled. I kept the energy leakage of avoiding pursuing my dreams and my passions and then watching other people do versions of what I wanted to do and other people launch podcasts and delight in it. And here I was sitting on it. 
It didn't feel good. There was the law of diminishing returns. And that was chipping away, chipping away, chipping away to where I finally got to a point of enough discomfort and feeling disappointed in myself, even shame. You know, like we only have one fucking life. What am I doing? Like, I might as well go for it. Like, why am I being such a scaredy cat? And not in a mean way. It's understandable, but God, enough's enough already. Like, if you still say you want the thing and you want to grow your business to X, Y, and Z, or you want to pursue this passion, or you want to pivot, or you want to write a book, or whatever the hell it is, if that has not left your heart, you're supposed to do it. But no, but waiting for it to be easy, the skies to open, the stars to perfectly align, that's not going to happen either. I promise you. Okay. I waited 10 years for it to happen. It never happened. You know what happened? I decided. I said enough's enough already. So let's look at the abundance anxiety signs that you're in this, okay? Number one, you have a hyper focus on maintaining control. AKA control freaks, shout out. Control, and this is coming from a hardcore Virgo. I've gotten the request, by the way. I would say about 50, around 50 people have requested I do an ASMR type episode specifically related to abundance. So if you want that, put that in the comments on YouTube. You can DM me on Instagram or TikTok at Project Me with Tiffany. I find it fascinating that you guys, I love ASMR. I'm more than happy to experiment with it. We'll see how I do with it. But let me know if that sounds interesting to you. All right. So this hyper focus on maintaining control. Individuals with abundance anxiety might exhibit a strong need for control in various aspects of their lives. They might micromanage situations, relationships, or projects excessively, fearing that any loss of control could lead to a loss of abundance or success. And what can happen here is you try to also do everything yourself in your business or in, in your, your personal life because you can do it better. And by the time you explain it to someone else, you could have just had it done. And most people let you down anyway. And now you have like 87 plates spinning at the same time and you're exhausted and you're even kind of a martyr about it. And then you get resentful towards other people who don't show up in the way you do. And if you're not in it and if you're not involved in all the things and all the weeds and all the areas of your life, then nothing's going to get done right. And, and then why would you want to pursue your other passions, your other dreams? Because you're so tapped physically and mentally and energetically. You're just so exhausted from being in this constant vibrating state of control and grasping onto that fucking branch so hard, you don't have any room left for these things. So you might even be someone who wants to do these things, but you don't see where you possibly have the bandwidth to do it because you're giving way too much away. I get a lot of people who come into my Project Me Posse business coaching membership who have a jobby job. Jobby job is the job that you're doing for money, but you really don't want to be doing it, but you're doing it to pay the bills. And you're also doing it because you are stuck in the avoidance or anxiety around abundance. And then you tell yourself the story, which I hear this all the time of, I don't have any energy left or mental bandwidth left after my jobby job to build build this on the side or build a side hustle or start pursuing other things and make any real traction. Well, you're you have you're definitely you definitely have stuff going on in your life that you're giving way too much energy to out of a state of feeling like you need to hyper focus in order to main, con maintain control in order to be safe in order to protect yourself. So take a look at that. Number two, persistent guilt or discomfort around success. Those experiencing abundance anxiety may feel persistent guilt or discomfort around your achievements or successes. So you might feel unworthy of your accomplishments, have even a so what feeling like, okay, that's nice, but there's, you know, but so many other, a lot of people have done that. So what? Like you minimize it. 
And then this leads to a reluctance to celebrate or fully enjoy your abundance. I've shared this a long time ago on here, but I remember, and I've been, and I, I've been doing this bullshit for most of my life. And it came from being raised by a narcissist where nothing was ever good enough, right? Like, like an A was standard. An A wasn't celebrated. You get what I'm saying? So you would have it would have to be so wildly exceptional and rare. And that was like, that's not something any human being could hit regularly in their lives. So then it taught me. So what? Like a lot of kids would do chores and get money for it. That's not how I was raised. Okay. I had to do excessively inappropriate age and appropriate chores. And I didn't get any money. That was for earning my keep. And I'm when I and I'm not talking about taking out the trash. Okay. I'm talking about like detailing a car with Q-tips that would take six, seven hours at eight years old. That's the shit I'm talking about. I digress. I share more of my story inside my workbook, which is why it was so vulnerable for me to put that out. And I got into my avoidance and anxiousness around abundance with that because of the vulnerability. So if you're someone where you've got your first few clients in your business or you're making 30,000, 50,000, whatever the fuck you're making in your business, you're like, yeah, but like so-and-so is making millions, but I'm nowhere near where I wanted to be at this point. Well, you're shitting on the abundance that's already there. And if you're not celebrating and in gratitude and in bliss and in joy about what you have and what you've created and the people that you help and the products you create and the service you provide and the joy and the comfort and the support you give others, why would the universe give you more? But it's like you're afraid to celebrate in it. It feels scary because this is the anxious side. There's, I mean, there's fear in both, but it feels scary to celebrate it. There's something that feels almost like, who do you think you are celebrating it? Or don't be so braggy about yourself. Like, calm down. You're not that amazing. Mm-hmm. I know this is hitting it for a lot of you. Number three, constant comparison and fear of falling behind. A hidden sign of abundance anxiety is a constant need to compare oneself to others. Whether you want to do it or not, it ends up happening, right? So you doom scrolling, you go to like holiday parties or you go to bir- someone's baby shower or some shit. You compare your relationship to someone else's. You compare the looks, the weight, the money, the joy, all the shit. You might be you might have a fear of falling behind or being behind or losing your position, even when you are objectively successful by all society standards. Also very common with my fel- fellow millionaires, multimillionaires, my established entrepreneurs that I coach in my two month private business coaching program for my entrepreneurs who are wanting to go from like high six figures to seven figures to multiple seven figures and eight figures. Very, very common, right? It's like, I'm behind. I should be here by now. Why am I not here by now? I need to be doing this. I don't want to miss out on this opportunity. I need to keep going. I need to keep going. And then you get so much stress and you're so dissatisfied. That's not a word, is it? Dissatisfied? dissatisfactory, dissatisfied. (laughs) You are so dissatisfied with your life, despite all these achievements. I know that if my therapist was listening to this part of the episode, she would go, oh my God, Tiffany, we just talked about it this week. Because of my mentor suddenly passing, I started going down this whole spiral, and this is a spiral, right? The avoidance, abundance, anxious, of the anxious of abundance. They're both fear spirals. I started going down the spiral. I'm behind. Look at what this person, comparison, look at what this person's doing and this person's doing and these people are doing in my industry and I'm not doing it and I've not done it yet. And look how long it's taking me. And oh my God, a da 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 da
does this get me any closer to abundance and not just abundance monetarily, but abundance and feeling wonderful in life and joyful and prosperous and excited and proud of myself? No, it robs all of that. But again, we can't do this shit on our own. This is why I have three coaches, a therapist, and a psychiatrist, and soon to be a concierge medical team. And I'm not fucking joking. Thank you. Number four, unexplained physical symptoms or stress-related issues. This is where a lot of people really get shook if. Abundance anxiety can manifest as unexplained physical symptoms, headaches, stomach issues, increased stress-related ailments. You get sick all the time, sinus infections. You seem to catch everything and then you go, oh, it's because of my kids or it's because I was around kids or it's because I was on an airplane. But regardless, the common theme is you seem to get sick all of the time. You have issues with your neck. You have TMJ. You are doing all of these things to chase all these symptoms in your body. You feel decades older than you really are in your body. Your body doesn't lie and your issues are stored in your tissues. I really want you to hear me on this. And I'm going to have on one of my mastermind students, Dr. Audra. I'm going to have her on talking about this so you can hear. We can go deeper into it with the science behind it. And you're going to go, holy shit. When you really learn to start listening to your body, it can tell you fucking everything. So these symptoms might surface due to underlying worries about maintaining success or fear of losing abundance or fear of it not happening. Are you in that spot right now? Mm -hmm. It can show up in your skin. It can show up I mean, in, a, in unexplained rashes that you go to different dermatologists and you buy all these potions for, you do food elimination diets and you spend all this time on all this shit, but this is what's underneath it all. Number five, overly defensive behavior about success. Individuals experiencing abundance anxiety might become overly defensive or secretive about their successes. They may downplay achievements or avoid discussing their abundance, fearing envy or attracting ne negative attention that could threaten their success. This was something that was very challenging for me in coming into the online space and making money on online, right? Exactly what I teach you, like monetizing your gifts, passions, talents, services, goods, intellectual property leveraging the entire world and have bringing your business online or having a separate arm of your brick and mortar business also being online. This is where people freeze and get all weird. Even people I know who are successful realtors, si successful doctors. These are people who've helped, who are my beautiful healers, who have helped hundreds of people heal and have incredible testimonials and do beautiful things. My creatives, where you have a store, maybe you have an Etsy store and people love your stuff or you buy people buy all your stuff, friends and family, and you people love all your shit, but then bringing it to the World Wide Web, bringing it to the interwebs, the social media world where this content lives on, where all these people can see it, you freeze. Because it's like, oh my God, now people are going to think I'm this. They're going to think I'm all about this. I'm going to get sued. I'm going to get canceled. People are going to realize that I really don't have my shit together and I don't fully know what I'm talking about. And I don't want to come across braggy and I don't want to make people who don't have that much money feel less than. And it really prevents you from showing up and shining. It's like you're, you dimming your achievements and your successes helps nobody. Mm hmm. I think that was a good spot to end there. So what are you going to do with this? It's very similar right on the avoidance side. What are you trying to protect yourself from and have a loving conversation with yourself? Like just like you would if you were talking to like a 14 year old, what is it you're trying to protect yourself from? What are you afraid is going to happen? Now let's take a look at what is happening as a result of you in this fierce fear protection mode. What is this costing you? 
Are you okay with that? How can we set things up so you feel the most supported as you take new and different familiar and scary actions? How can you best be supported? Because being in self-will isn't going to cut it, right? That's not enough. You've already tried, tried to figure it out. You've been in limbo for a long time. You've already kicked the can down the road for probably years. So that would be your next move to take that action of what can I do to best support myself? What can I do to show up regardless? That's more than self-will. What am I willing to invest my time and energy and money in in order to create a different life for myself? And you want to go deeper in this? This is my guided video workbook course. This is make more work less. This is it. This is the secret. Living in this is why it's so hard for you to generate the abundance, the money, the love, the joy, the peace, the freedom, the luxuriating, the lifestyle, all the stuff you want. And the beautiful thing is this is all stuff within your control. All of this stuff right here. This is the foundational work. And without this, even though I'm an expert strategist, I work with multi-billion dollar companies. I have thousands and thousands of testimonials from people starting from scratch, from all different industries, people who are wanting to scale to all different levels. I could build your exact plan and give you a play-by-play on what to do every day. And none of that will fucking matter if you don't learn how to deeply manage and identify and do this. Now, if you're not at a point by getting this damn workbook course, I really don't know what to do with you. (laughs) You can go to projectmewithtiffany.com forward slash make more work less. Link is in the show notes in the description on Project Me TV. It's in my social medias at Project Me with Tiffany. Let me know what you thought about this episode. Take a screenshot, share it on social media, share it with a friend, share it with someone who you know will appreciate this unique approach when looking at abundance and tap five stars on Spotify, on Apple podcasts. It takes you literally less than a second and it goes a long way. And if you truly want to show your appreciation for the abundance that I pour into you and the love that I pour into these episodes, writing a written review on Apple podcasts, which right now is the only platform you can do a written review on. It truly goes a long way. And I read each and every one of them. And so does my team who works behind the scenes on this. And believe me, they delight in it sometimes even more than me because it feels so good to hear how much this show is helping people. We're now top five worldwide, which blows my mind. And I wanted to avoid saying that out of being in avoidance of abundance and not wanting to be braggy. But we are. And we deserve to be. Because this shit's real on here and we don't do basic and it's coming from the heart. And I love you guys so much. Wishing you great health, wealth, and worth as always. Love you.